special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The catapult. soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long, and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik! Why in the world would you shoot at a fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> no, like, now push. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly! Ha <laughs> ha! Right out the window! Right up to the moon! First fixin' onto the world, Nolik! Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir! Nolik, get out of the spoon now! I'll be the first fixie on the moon! Yeah! Nolik, enough of this! What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all! He's gonna fly into space! And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter! Hold on! Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah, Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times but people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you, too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Pavus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So... Let's do it! Fire! Launch it! Stop! Don't! 
Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! Ah! Whew! We're alive! Hooray! He flew all the way! Who flew away? To the moon? Nope, just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? <sighs> oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you, because I've got a pack-a-mat. All right. Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack-a-mat, all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Wow! Talk about no friction. Are you all right? Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew! 
We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like, I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. <laughs> Yeehaw! And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? From them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ugh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. 
Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In the refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop. Come on, jump. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R. What's the lesson? Hm. Someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a mirror. 
miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, although... That's great, so let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. Hey, Nolik, come help me. The fan in the computer needs dusting. Not right now. Me and Tom Thomas are painting a card for his parents' anniversary. Oh, look, poor you. You must be so tired. Hi, Simka. It's really great you're here. I have a question. Twelfth anniversary, is it spelled with an F or is it with a V? Uh, you know what? First put down the number 12 and then put a dash on there and then a TH. Oh, right. But first I'll change the water. I'll be right back. Oh. Mama left her ring here. Whoa! Ah, uh, no, ah, uh, uh, no! Oh, no, what have I done? Uh, I spoiled my mom and dad's uh, special day. Where? In the bathroom? My mom's ring was lying there, and, and I dropped it into the sink, and now it's washed away. Uh, there goes the day. It didn't wash anywhere. Don't you know anything about how a drain trap works? About a what? A drain trap's a special curved pipe under the sink basin. Water flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap. And after that, it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Well, that means we still got a chance. Yeah, but how in the world can we get it out of that trap? Who knows? I don't know how to swim. Don't worry. It's all under control. Do you have any thread? Plenty of it. Go get it, and I'll be back in a flash. Hmm. I can't fix it like this. I need my welder. Papoose! I need to borrow your pack a mat for a little while. Now that's a coincidence. I need to use it too. Masya, then I need to use your pack a mat. What? I'll bring it right back. Hey, where are you going? Just watch what you're doing, dear. Just like the name says, Fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and Fixies are very small, so they can't get by without tools. Long ago, Fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called pack mats Inside a pack mat are all sorts of tools. Just push the button and the pack mat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult fixie has their own pack a mat But before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged fixie. And it's only after all of that that young fixies get their own pack a mats And what? You're going down there with just that on? Not just like this. Yeah, like that. Huh? She was just saying, when I tug on the thread, you need to pull me up. I got it. He just said, I got it. She said, she doesn't need me to repeat what you say.
you. You really saved the day. That's what fixies are for. I said that's what fixies are for. Tom Thomas, who are you talking with in there? Oh, your mom came back. No one. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pagamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off, but he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part burned out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tadish! Tom Thomas! Tadish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. No, look, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. We barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry! Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then, we 
We put the part back into the computer, and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Marcia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. <laughs> Tom Thomas, you'll be late for school if you don't stop. School? <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> What's he breaking this time? This time, nothing. He's solving a Rubik's Cube, Nolik. Whose cube is it? <laughs> the Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. To solve a Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. <laughs> That's nothing. Hey, Tom Thomas, how long have you been messing around cube already. It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. Ugh. Like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Ugh. No, I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What? You can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great. I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? What? This side's gotta be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simka was telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Simka could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. For this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people, it's good for fixies, too. That's right, puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There, all done. No, you better hurry, because Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this. We did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. Simka, Nolik, I'm back. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao. Woohoo! Wow, you really solved it. It was Nolik. 
Nolik, you are cool. So how? You see, first you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all huh? back together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now it's a Nolix Cube, right? The first period is almost over. Tom Thomas's team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Simka, pass it to me! <sighs> <sighs> Nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, my motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. <laughs> ah! Six nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know, speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. And here's what we're gonna do. We got it. Check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game.
I get creamed like that? Because you're by yourself here, and we are a team! Team! <laughs> Yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you because I've got a pack of mat. All right. Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack of mat, all right? is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. Um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oh, you slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Are you all right? Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papoos! Papoos! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <gasps> What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew! We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. 
Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. <laughs> Yeehaw! Things fine here, too. I wish something would break for a change. It's already been a week and nothing's broken in here. Stop worrying. Everything breaks at some point. Well, nothing seems to ever break inside of this house. That's because we take such good care of it. No, Masya, it's boring with no real work to do. We should move somewhere else. When Fixies graduate from school, they must choose the place where they want to work. Some will work at factories, and some on ships, and some in theaters, and some in hospitals, too. Fixies are needed everywhere. Now, Fixie families with children like to choose places that are a bit quieter. Usually, they'll settle inside of people's houses. It's not too noisy there, like in a factory, but there's still plenty of work to do. They need to check on appliances like computers, vacuum cleaners, telephones, irons, and washing machines. And Fixies always try their best. They just love being busy with work. And so, if there's nothing broken in the house, Fixie families will move to a new place where there's much more work to be done. Nolik, did you hear that? Uh, I don't want to move anywhere. But think about the kids, dear. They've got their school and friends here. Do you like this friend of theirs? A human kid playing with Fixie kids. You know as well as I that it's just not right. <sighs> All right, then. If nothing's broken down before the end of the day, that's all. We gotta move. Oh, no, I can't. Tom Thomas comes home the day after tomorrow, and we'd be gone by then. Pull yourself together. And I won't see him anymore at all? No, like, I have an idea. What, what idea? If something happens to break down before the end of the day, then we're not moving. But what if nothing breaks? Calm down. We're gonna make sure of it. Suka, you're a genius. But how can we make sure of it? We're going to use a crowbar. A crowbar is powerful and simple. It's nothing more than a heavy metal bar with either sharp or flat ends. It can be very helpful for breaking through concrete or ice. It can also be used as a lever to root out a tree stump or move a boulder. If one end of the bar has a claw cut into it, then it's good for pulling out nails. Yes, sometimes the simplest tools are the most powerful ones. Do we have that tool? We've got our pack -a mat And it's got everything. No, you're not. N now I'm confused. First off, whatever you break's gotta look like it broke all by itself. Oh, I gotcha. And second, you gotta break it in some way that can be fixed later. Did someone say something needs fixing? <clears throat> or am I hearing things? Papas, we just found out that the uh, television's broken down. Are you sure? Yeah. And one of the keys on the keyboard is stuck. For real? For real. And the clock's not running either. Oh, ho! Masya, our life is getting back on the right track. Should we fix them? Yeah, what else? We are the Fixies. We live to keep on working, and work for us is fun. So we'll just keep on working, because our work's never done. And deep inside of gadgets, if you look when it's dark, you might just see us face around like multicolored sparks. One, two, three. Denise! Inside will be... Denise! To fix what's wrong, to it run strong. One, two, three, Denise. inside will be Denise. all day and night. Denise. We fix things right.
Titty! Oh, that was a lot to do. You'd almost think that somebody broke it on purpose. Well, we didn't do it. It broke by itself. Yeah, this apartment still needs a lot of work. We shouldn't move anywhere. I like it here. So do I. It's the best. See, we don't need to go anywhere. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. When a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity and hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. There, all done. Nolik, bring him in. <laughs> and now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! So 
totally awesome. I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain reaction. Ready? Set? Go. <laughs> oh! Yay! Oh, oh. Again, I couldn't do it. I told you. There's just no way to hold on when the globe is turning that fast. But I know I can do it. Hmm. Give me that piece of rope there, would you? <sighs> now you can't throw me off. Spin it. Go on. Whoa! What you doing? Trying to learn a bit about the Earth's gravity? That's a globe, not the Earth. Well, a globe's a model of the Earth, isn't it? Hey, come on, Simka. The globe looks like a ball, but the Earth is flat. We walk on it. The Earth also looks like a ball. It's just a very, very big one. It's not true. If the Earth is really round like you say, then it would throw people right off of it, like the globe does to me. No, it's just that the Earth pulls everyone towards it. Are you sure? The planet that we live on, the Earth, is a huge sphere. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Do you know why they don't fly away from each other? It's because of a force called gravity that pulls all objects towards each other. The heavier the object, the stronger its pull. That's why people, rocks, air, and water get pulled towards the Earth instead of floating up into space. Thanks to gravity, we are able to walk on the Earth. Why doesn't the globe pull on me like the Earth does? Because this globe is very light. Compared to the Earth, this globe is like millions of billions of times lighter. Compared to the Earth, we're specks of dust. He's right. Look, a speck of dust. It sticks to the globe like we stick to the Earth. Oh, come on. It's just because no one's turning it. But the Earth's spinning and we stick to it. What? I just don't believe you. There's just no way the Earth is spinning. You've really got no idea how the days all turn into the nights, do you? Do too. It's because the sun goes up and then sets. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Our sun's here and you're over there. On Earth. Is it dark, Nolik? It's dark. Then it's nighttime on your side. And here, it's day. All right. Now we'll turn the Earth. Hooray! Now it's daytime for me, and night for me over here. Ah, my side got dark again. And for me, it's a new day. All right, fine. You guys were right. I believe you. The Earth is spinning. <laughs> the Earth goes round and round like a tilted spinning top. And as it spins, the sun shines its light on whichever half of the Earth is facing it. And as the Earth makes one full turn, we watch how the night becomes day and the day becomes night again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full turn. But that's not all. The Earth is also traveling in space around the sun. It takes the Earth one year to make a full circle. As it goes along its way, the top and bottom of the Earth take turns being closer to the sun. That's because the Earth is tilted. When the top half is closer to the sun, it's summer there, while at the very same time on the bottom half, it is winter. And when it is winter on the top half, it is summer on the bottom. Nolik. Nolik, where are you? I'm not sure. Somewhere in Kazakhstan. The force of gravity is super strong around here. So go on, spin it. You're gonna fall off, Nolik. Don't worry, just do it. Go ahead and tilt it if you feel like it. Told ya! Ha! And you were sure I was gonna fall off this globe. That's strange. Nolik, come on over here. What for? You'll see in a second. I don't want to. You really don't want or you can't. Tom Thomas, take a look. <laughs> I get it. He stuck himself to the globe, didn't he? Yeah, with the chewing gum. Isn't it time to go? Uh-huh. And me! Well, what about me? Hey! Ah! You gotta help me. Don't leave me. Should we help him? But the pull of chewing 
them is even stronger than the Earth's gravity. 